Hello and welcome along to part 3 on how to design your own layout and timetable using the Railway Operation Simulator which you can find at this website. Just to recap what we did in the first two videos, we laid our track, we inserted our signals, we made a couple of stations up and we also uh, inserted our entry and exit points. We made sure that we've got all green ticks on this side and we made sure that we'd set the track preferred directions like this. Now the last thing that we have to do before we start thinking about um, making uh, our timetable up is actually save um, our railway again but this time with a different file extension uh, let's go into save railway as at the moment um, we're working on let me just go into DEV we're using DEV files what we need to do is save the railway now as a railway file we'll keep it as the same name and we'll click on save I've actually already saved it as this name so it's just going to basically do an overwrite yes we do then we'll go into load railway and we'll make sure that the railway file is loaded and not the DEV file intro layout open and we're now in the operate railway well we can't operate railway yet because we need to load a timetable but we haven't got a timetable so what we're going to do is create one and all we need to do is go into mode and create a timetable this area here this white box here is the is where we actually type in all the commands that we need to create trains but before we start making our timetable up we need to do a little bit of housework we'll go into information track information show and we need to make a note of some numbers and it's the track locations. I did mention this in uh, video number one we need to make a note of this location which is ID 3420 so we need to write down on a piece of paper 3420 and the piece of track next to it which is 3520 we need to know where exit uh, the uh, coordinates for exit A which is 7720 but we only need one coordinate for exits and we also need this one 7722 and 7622 and finally we need to make a note on a piece of paper of 3422 as well the reason you should do that is because it makes life a lot easier when you're actually inserting trains um, it's much easier just to refer to your notes that you've made on a piece of paper rather than have to keep hiding the timetable every few seconds or so the first command or the first timetable entry that we need to make is the time because the program needs to know what time the simulation is due to start so we're going to type in 06 colon 00 and then save the entry and over here you can see we've now got our very first uh, entry which is the start time and it's automatically entered 06 00 into the timetable start time now what I've done to make life a little bit easier and to save the boring uh, say boring you <laughs> with watching me actually type stuff in <clears throat> I've actually created a timetable for this and I put it into a text file and then what we'll do is we'll copy and paste uh, each entry that I've made and we'll paste it into the timetable and it's also I think going to be easier for you to see uh, with this size of text exactly which what each entry refers to so what we're going to do is make up a timetable that's got three trains basically a train that appears from entry A and goes out through exit A a train that appears at entry B and goes out through exit B and a third train which is going to come in at entry A go up to the terminus reverse and then come back to disappear again through exit B as I explained to you when we were actually building the track so there's going to be three trains that we're going to need to make and these are the three trains here and I'll go through each line for you the top line is basically a train identifier the first two digits uh, of the identifier can be either numbers or letters I've decided to use letters so that the train that comes from entry A to exit A is going to be called AA the train that comes from entry B to exit B is going to be called BB and AT for entry A to the terminus the last two digits need to be numbers because they are, uh, they will increase, if we're going to re repeat the trains, which in fact we are going to do with this last line, I'll explain that later, those two is, uh, those are, the last two digits are the numbers that increment each time a new train appears on the layout, so 
The first train that appears at 0601 is going to be AA01. The next one is going to be AA02 and so on and so forth. Then you can put in a description, entry A to exit A, which will actually appear if you hover your mouse over the trains when we're actually running it. Um, we can actually hover over each train and it will tell us that the train is entry A to exit A. Now these last four numbers, uh, one, two, three, four, five numbers, uh, I've actually put a little key down here to remind <laughs> me and you exactly what they stand for. The first two numbers is the starting speed, the speed that the train will be going when it appears on the layout, and also the maximum speed. Now I've kept these two the same, in fact I've kept the numbers that I've used for my London transport layouts and they're in kph, kilometers per hour, so 56 kilometers per hour is the maximum speed. You can change that if you're doing a, a British Rail um, a layout that may be you know, East Coast Main Line for example and you've got maximum speeds of 125 miles, miles an hour then um, obviously you would change those numbers. Handily, Albert when he wrote the program has actually put in a little converter for you. So if you put in 125, for example, it tells you that the k kilometers per hour is 201. Very handy. <laughs> Saves you have to use a calculator. But we're not going to worry too much about that because I'm just going to keep things fairly simple as far as this is concerned and keep both the starting speed and the maximum speed at 56. The last two numbers are mass, max braking force and power. I'm not going to worry, i just leave those as they are, they're the program defaults. Um, you can mess about them if you want to, but for me they're just an added complication which I'm not going to worry you or me about at this moment. Now the train is going to appear at 0601 at entry point A, let's just hide this for a second. It's going to appear at 0601 at entry point A. That is the command that uh, we need to put in to actually tell the program that we want to train to appear, if we just show the timetable again, it's start new service, okay? Start new train, SNT, start new train, okay? That's what that stands for. And they are the coordinates that I told you to write down earlier on, 34, 20, 35, 20. What's going to happen is it's going to come in here at 6.04, three minutes after it's appeared, we expect it to both arrive and depart at the through station. It's then at 6.05 going to leave the map at this point, which is 0605, uh, and we'll just go back and show you on the timetable, FER, which is down here somewhere. It stands for Finish and Exit Railway. Just as a <coughs> matter of interest, these buttons are actually clickable. So instead of actually typing SNT for start new train, you could click on that button and it will automatically enter it up there. I'll prove it to you. I'll just put it in there just for us and show you. SNT, it goes in. We obviously don't want it on that particular line. So you can actually input these particular commands um, by clicking on these buttons. Just bear in mind, and it's dead easy to do, and I do it all the time myself, the buttons when you press them automatically put in a, co a semicolon, which is the uh, which is what the program needs to separate commands both before and after each command. It's dead easy to actually type in a semicolon yourself, then click a button and find you've got two semicolons and the program will then tell you that uh, there's something wrong with the syntax. Right, so that's the first train that's going to appear. Now the most important line of all is probably the last one which starts off with an R and that means <coughs> this train is going to repeat. The next uh, number four is the minutes that are going to pass by between each repeat. So in other words, the first one is going to appear at 6.01, you then add four minutes, so the next one will be at 6.05, 6.09, etc, etc. The next number, one, tells the program how many, uh, ha how many increments these last two digits go up each time a train appears. So leaving it at one, it means the next train will be AA02, AA03, etc. If I made that two, then the next train would be AA03, then it would be AA05, etc, etc. So you can actually decide how many you want these numbers to go up each time a train appears. And the last number tells the program how many times you actually want this, this train to repeat. In other words, the train AA01 is going to come into the system every four minutes. The This number here is going to increment by one every time and it's going to happen 20 times. Now, what I'll do is I'll just highlight that and copy it 
and what we do over here now is let, we'll actually put it into the timetable now because I made a little change to this earlier on I've got to resave it again now we're going to insert a new entry I'll right click and paste and all that information that uh, I've just saved on there has now appeared here we'll save the entry and now we'll do a syntax check and if there was anything wrong it would tell me so for example if I put in a stray semicolon like I told you it's so easy to do just there we'll save the entry do a syntax check and it tells me there's an error in the timetable it even tells me 0605 two semicolons okie dokie we'll go back up there click in there if I can there we go backspace save entry now do a syntax check and it's okay what I always do is each time I put an entry in I'll save it and because it's the first time that we've made this timetable up we're going to click on save timetable as so click on there up comes the box we're going to I've already made one as it happens so we'll just overwrite intro layout I'm going to call the timetable exactly the same as the other files as well so it's going to be intro layout TTB and click on save it says it exists yes I do I'll replace it yes I do so that's the first train let's highlight the second train which is BB01 I'm going to copy that there first of all if we just have a quick look BB01 it's very similar to AA01 except for the fact that it comes in from entry point A it goes through it still a, a, arrives at 601 uh, onto the map it then goes through the through station at 603 and we expect it to disappear from exit point B at 0605 so go back into the timetable click on insert new entry I'm going to right click and paste that save the entry do a syntax check yeah that seems okay save the time don't need to do a save timetable as this time we can just save timetable and now we can ask it to validate the timetable and it says the timetable integrity is okay if you've made any mistakes or the program is not happy with what you've done and there's all sorts of mistakes that you can make then it will give you some sort of visual clue about what, what it thinks is wrong but uh, everything is hunky-dory with this so now as you can see we've got two entries in we've got AA01 and we've got BB01 the last train we're going to put in, I'll just hide that again, is the train that's going to appear from entry point A, go to the terminus and reverse back, which is this one here, AT01. I'll just highlight and copy that. Okay, I've given it the description, entry A to terminus to exit. It's going to appear, now what I've had to do, and this is where you have to start thinking about things when you're timetabling. If you remember, I've told the program that uh, trains AA are going to appear every four minutes so there's going to be one at 601 there's going to be one at 605 there's going to be one at 609 so I need to try and make sure that these trains appear um, in between the arrival times of trains AA because this is going to be a high intensity layout so I've said 0603 so there'll be an AA at 601 then AT01 will come in at 603 then the next one of those and so on and so forth the commands are very similar it comes in at those two coordinates same as up here this time though instead of going to the through station it's going to go to the terminus and we only need to put in one time because it's going to arrive at the terminus it will be what we expect it to be at 606 <coughs> excuse me once it arrived at 606 we're going to reverse it or change its direction if we go back into the timetable you see where it says CDT change direction of train so we're going to tell the program that <coughs> excuse me this particular train will arrive at the terminus at 606 at 607 it's going to reverse in other words the driver's got out of the cab we're assuming <laughs> we're assuming it's maybe a tube train he's got a cab at one end he's walked up to the other and it's going to change direction and then at 608 okay two minutes after it arrives it's then going to depart okay and at 610 it's going to go out of exit point B which is the same place as train BB and for this particular train and I'll explain my reasons for this in the fourth video instead of um, bringing these trains in every four minutes we're going to bring it, bring it in every six minutes okay so it's going to repeat it's going to be six minutes 
the number's going to go up by one every time and it's going to repeat 20 times so we'll just put that in we'll, did I, I can't remember if I highlighted and copied it now I'll do it again just to make sure highlight copy go back into the timetable now what we need to do is insert a new entry paste it save the entry do a syntax check everything seems OK save the timetable validate it timetable integrity OK so we've actually put the three trains in that we need to do and as far as the program is concerned everything is fine we validated it and it's happy we've also saved it so we don't have to go into save as again and we can come out and that's it for making up a simple timetable remember you can always check on help as well There's loads of help that you can get to by just clicking obviously on the help button up here for example this is a useful page if you want a, remind, uh, a reminder of the commands that you need to put in for a simple train that appears and it tells you here FRH means finish remain here uh, FER which is the ones that we've used means finish exit railway etc etc so there's plenty of help available right that's it for this video the fourth and final video will be looking at operating the railway and also troubleshooting